The Android manifest file is a very important file in your Android application. It is basically the configuration for your Android application. You can open it up here and our first screen is the manifest file. I'm looking at the graphical editor here which makes it a little easier to edit some things in the manifest file. I'll show you the raw XML after we go through this section of it. Basically here you have the package which is going to be the package name that your application is going to belong to. Then you have version code and version name. These are a little bit confusing, but I'll give you an example with my applications. I increment the version code every time, and then the version name only changes when it's an actual release that I want to give to the user. So for example, the version code is internal. It determines specifically if you have a different version of your application and which is greater. The version name is what's going to be showed to the user. So you just want to keep that in mind. You can increment the version code by one every time like I do, and then the version name, maybe when you have a bigger release, you go to 2.0 or however you want to name it, that's fine. The other thing to take note here on this main screen is the manifest extras. This tells your application that it uses a special SDK or some other type of extra thing that's uh, needed for your application. It, you probably won't use this very often, but it's also on this screen here in case you are looking for it. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is the application tab. On this tab, this is going to contain most of the main details about your actual application. You have, you can see here the label, this is what your application name would be. The app name goes right here. And then you have your icon for your application. You can set up all kinds of other configuration for your application here. And then you have application nodes. This controls what activities are going to be displayed in your application in what order. And you can change this and add ones and, and remove them here. We won't go into that yet until we get into the activities, but this is where you can find that on this page here. Uh, next is the permissions. This is where you're going to add actual permissions for your application to request. Like, for example, if we wanted to say that this application needed to be able to request permission to use the internet or we want to declare our own permission. In this case, we could declare our own permission here. So then you have instrumentation and this one allows you to directly test Android applications with JUnit. This is a fairly new thing that they've added to Android. I haven't used it a lot myself yet but it basically allows you to add some instrumentation code or classes that will intercept calls in your Android application. Not something that's really important for you to understand right away unless you're doing something like that, but it's there on that tab. And then let's take a look at the XML view of this. To be honest, I do a lot of my work in the XML view just because a lot of examples you'll find online will just have the XML part of it and you can just copy that in and change it as you need. This is a basic XML file that contains a structure that is defined in all of the graphical representations on, on the other tabs that we've seen here. You can see that we have you know, our basic root manifest, which has the version code and version name and the package. And then we have our application, and you can see the attributes correspond to the app name, and icon. And then within the application, we have activities, and you can have multiple activities in here. And then our intent filters, which we're not going to get into right now, but when we get into activities, we'll talk about this more. This defines that this is a main, this is the main activity for this Android application and that it should be available from the launcher. So it makes it so this is the main access point for your application. And that's all there is to the manifest file. There's a lot more details to this file than what we've just briefly gone over here. I encourage you, if you're interested, to take a look at the Android documentation and you can find out about each one of these attributes. But I will be covering some of the ones that we're going to be using in our Android application development later on in, in later modules as we get to them.